Ladies and gentlemen, Merry Christmas! Hopefully you're having an amazing Christmas day. Let me know what Santa bought you in the comments down below. And I actually wasn't intending to record today, but there is a couple of very interesting news pieces, which is unusual for Christmas, to say the least. And Asus have bought us a gift. They've confirmed the existence, as well as some of the specs, of both the RTX 3080 Ti and the RTX 3060. Now, obviously, when manufacturers are preparing to release cards, custom cards, not the Founders Edition, of course, they have to, well, list those products on their website, both for the ability to, well, advertise the cards, and also for support purposes, too. But generally speaking, the rule is that they're not supposed to leak these uh, listings prior to the release of the GPUs. It's kind of like, well, that's what NDAs are for. However, Asus in this case did an oopsie, and they've confirmed the existence of both the 3080 Ti uh, having 20 gigabytes of uh, RAM, as well as the RTX 3060 having a 12 gigabyte model. Now, while the full specs of these cards have not been listed for, uh, by Asus, and we'll get into the two models of GPU in just a moment, this does almost certainly confirm that the specs that we've been hearing from uh, folks such as kopt 7 Kimmy, who have been really accurate in the past, is 100% bang on. So let's have a look at the specs. And thanks, by the way, to 9550PRO, for this discovery on Asus's website. I'll, of course, link their Twitter account in the video description. So the two SKUs from the uh, Asus website of the 3080 Ti variety are, uh, well, both of them are ROG Strix cards. There's the RTX 3080 Ti 020G Gaming, which is probably factory overclocked, if I had to guess. And then there's the RTX 3080 Ti 20G Gaming. And again, it's a ROG Strix card, but this time it's probably using reference uh, clock frequencies. This is similar to what Asus have done for other cards, so it makes sense that they've continued this. The specs of these GPUs, um, while this part hasn't been confirmed by Asus, uh, again, kopt 7 Kimi has been right so far, and with the 20 gigabyte uh, specs confirmed by Asus, I think that this is probably accurate. These GPUs have 10,496 CUDA cores. This means that in terms of the GPU core, it's identical between the 3090 and the RTX 3080 Ti, with perhaps slightly lower clock frequencies, who knows. The only difference between these two GPUs really is 4 gigabytes of memory, and naturally this does mean that we have a narrower memory bus for the 3080 Ti. If I had to guess, I would say 99% of people, if you were to give them blind performance numbers between the two cards, or at least a blind uh, comparison, they would not be able to tell the difference. And this is particularly true if you overclocked the memory of the GPU as well. Um, naturally, Ampere does do fairly well with overclocking of memory, so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, we see very similar, and you can crank those memory clock frequencies up, which will in turn, of course, increase the performance of the GPU, almost certainly to basically indistinguishable levels of the RTX 3090. Now, I'm hearing that NVIDIA are aiming to uh, price this card at 999 US dollars, which would basically mean it's about 50% cheaper than the RTX 3090, depending on how much retailers decide to gouge you. Furthermore, it would mean that it's competing very well against the 69, nice, 100 XT from AMD, which obviously has 80 compute units, 16 gigabytes of RAM, blah, blah, blah. But as they say, there's also more. The RTX 3060, um, is obviously a further cut-down variant of the RTX 3060 Ti. But the weird thing is that the rumours of this card have basically alleged that we'll have 12 gigabytes of memory, which is really bonkers when you think about it. The 3060 Ti actually has uh, 8 gigabytes of memory, and this is due to the uh, memory bus width being a little narrower. The uh, 3060 Ti has, of course, 256-bit, whereas this has just 192-bit, which means that they either release the card with 6GB uh, variants, which they are going to do, and they also can release 12GB. Basically, NVIDIA were kind of like in a rock and a hard place. We'll get into the specs in just a moment. But Asus have also confirmed 
that we're looking indeed at a 12 gigabyte model of this GPU. Now, I do think that the 3060 Ti is an amazing card. And I, in my opinion, anyway, if I were throwing my money down on a GPU of roughly that caliber, I probably wouldn't buy the 3070. This is what I said in my review. I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. This information actually is courtesy of Igor's lab of the specs of the GPUs, but again, the 12 gigabyte model is slightly more powerful. So it has 3,840 CUDA cores. This is a cut compared to the TI variant, which has 4,864. However, um, the memory clock is faster at 16 GPPS, but the actual uh, bus is obviously narrower. Meanwhile, the 3066 gigabyte model, I did say NVIDIA want to confuse us, it has even fewer CUDA cores at 3584, but again, 6 gigabytes of memory, however, the clock frequency here is diminished even further, back to the same clock frequency as the 3060 Ti, but with also the accompanying narrower bus as well, so it's... <laughs> It's going to be really interesting to test those two cards out to see what the differences are. And obviously those GPUs are not designed for 4K gaming, but 6 gigabytes of RAM on a card? Mm, unsure about that. I... Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll have to wait and see how it, you know, progresses over the next year. I think the 12 gigabyte model is going to be absolutely fine. Six gigabyte, hmm, high texture quality settings. I, 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 I don't really know if I would be super happy to recommend that card for kind of a 1440p GPU. It could be okay though for 1080p or if you're doing like DLSS, but again, DLSS, DLSS, excuse me, and ray tracing can kind of crank up the amount of RAM that's used on GPUs as well. So, eh. The last thing I would like to cover in this video is Rocket Lake. One Raichu on Twitter, again, I will link their tweet in the description of this video, has essentially confirmed the uh, production schedule of Rocket Lake processors. As you are likely aware at this point, Rocket Lake is only going to be 8 cores, 16 threads, but it does have a brand new architecture, although it's still on the 14nm node from Intel, aka Grandpa's favourite. The one positive is, though, that the IPC gains for this architecture are fairly impressive, and we're kind of in this weird situation with the 500 series platform and Rocket Lake, because uh, the 500 series platform seems to be launching early next year. It looks like it's going to be announced at CES, which of course is uh, January, but the actual Rocket Lake processes start entering mass production around this time, and then obviously will start trickling onto store shelves maybe a couple of months later, at least according to what we're seeing here. However, any report that Skylake is dead is quite exaggerated, because it will still be for the 11th generation, albeit in lower core count configurations, like quad-core, for example. I don't know if I like this from a marketing perspective, as I do feel it will cause confusion. Basically, people will be looking at uh, an 11th generation processor, look at quad-core and think, hmm, this is a nice upgrade from my, like, I don't know, 7700 or 6700 uh, Dell build or whatever. And, of course, that's not really going to be the case because there might be higher clock frequencies and maybe some changes to the actual platform. But, fundamentally, the core architecture is going to be identical and I don't think it's going to really affect many of you, to put it mildly. Uh, I don't think you're going to get really confused, but I think the mass market, yeah, I'm, it is what it is, right? I suspect that the actual architecture is much cheaper to produce, because at this point, <laughs> you can't say that Intel are not, um, you can't say they're not expert in manufacturing the architecture of Skylake. That's one thing you cannot say. But I think that's just about it for this video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. I wish you all a Merry Christmas, and um, if you have enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to the channel and uh, ring the bell icon, because that does help the channel grow. And, yeah, have an amazing Christmas, guys. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.